So I'm going to the chiropractor today, and as I'm turning in, I hear something clunk under my car. <laughs> I pull in, pull up, get down under the car, look, and the most of the exhaust system fell down in the back. So I go in, I have my appointment, everything goes good there, and I get adjusted, feeling pretty good. It's feeling decent this morning anyways. And I go back out and I try to rig it up with a little wire I had in the car. Didn't really work out coming home. But just a couple of minutes trying to get under that car and turning my neck to try to reach something completely tweaked my neck right after an adjustment. Like That stuff messes with me so much. I really need to stay like straight line when I do stuff. If I try to twist and reach or twist and reach and grab and pull and stuff like that, those those types of motions really, especially my neck, really mess up my spine quick. So the next couple of days are going to suck because my neck's a little bit out of alignment um, right after the adjustment, which is so ironic. But then, now I'm going to try to take this chain and chain my exhaust system back up to hold that together for a while da, 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 da. because well, I, I need the car to keep moving keep working keep going uh let's see what else oh the diet super interesting stuff with the diet so i've been running experiments way too many experiments to stabilize it more for a for a single case study but anyways i tested vitamin c yesterday i took 500 milligrams of vitamin C seven times throughout the day yesterday. So that is 3.5 grams of vitamin C yesterday and felt good. Actually, I felt energetic, which I just do not get energetic anymore. Uh, so that was really good. But I also did a ton of research on vitamin C over the last couple of days, which is really interesting because I've been wondering when I started doing this, uh, this really elimination, the strong elimination diet based on meat then I had a strong detox effect, which leads me to believe that I probably have some sort of systemic infection uh, somewhere along the way. And I was thinking about this. I've always been a huge vitamin C believer taker. And I have a, I have a ton of research on it, all sorts of research on it, which is super interesting and enhancing the immunity, but doesn't hold with certain parasites like malaria and things like typhoid basically all the stuff you get sick from in africa if you're taking vitamin c it makes you more susceptible to it and it makes it harder to cure slash impossible there's a bunch of interesting studies on that type of stuff but basically there's probably a reason that vitamins that humans and primates more in general evolved to not make vitamin c in their body which is interesting because basically all mammals, except for a couple of bats, guinea pigs, and some primates, make vitamin C in their body. So they don't have to consume it necessarily, but humans don't. That gene is wiped out like 65 million years ago. It's a long time ago. But there's a reason for that. And this the malaria theory is is a pretty good one from what I can tell, from what I, I can find. And it makes a lot of sense in that if your body was making vitamin C and you're consuming vitamin C, so you have too much or you have a lot of vitamin C and that makes you more susceptible to dying from malaria and you live in the tropics in Africa, then everyone that has the form of the gene that makes vitamin C dies and doesn't have kids. And everyone that doesn't then lives. And iron is also associated with that. High, high levels of vitamin C and high levels of iron are not good for malaria. They'll basically cancel out treatment even. Whereas if you drop the vitamin C and the iron, then you're a lot better at fighting off a lot of these types of parasites. So super interesting, kind of mind-blowing stuff for me there. Uh, tested vitamin C or vitamin D a little bit today. It kind of felt weird on that almost right off the bat. The thing is, the pill is made with a lot of soy and and D. I don't know. It, also, the D you consume orally is not the same as when UVB light hits your skin, interacts with cholesterol, right? Cholesterol is super good for you. All the stuff about lowering your cholesterol, super bad. Uh, 
interacts with the cholesterol, which makes an oil on your skin, which contains vitamin D and other things, and then gets absorbed into your skin. And that's the, the way it's supposed to work, obviously. I can't even go. I used to go for tons of walks, and I can't even do that anymore. So I'm definitely not getting that. So I was thinking about doing it in pill form, reintroducing that, and see how it go. And I, I didn't feel good on it. So that's very interesting. I tried salt, pepper, and garlic on burgers for the first time in a long time, and you know, several weeks. And whoo, that tasted good. Oh man, that was so good. But I had a little bit of a scratchy throat right afterwards, so I have to sort those out and figure out which ones give me trouble or if all three are giving me trouble. You know, salt, pepper, garlic. It seems like one of them most likely gave me a little bit of trouble there. Uh, so that that was kind of interesting. Let's see, do I have anything else super interesting on here? Nah, those are the most interesting, I guess, for now. For now. And I believe that's, that's basically all. Well, I have a bunch of other things I've been thinking about. Here is a to-do list that I started working on. So that's kind of crazy. Uh, I figured out how much I own taxes by... Well, the way I calculate it right now, which was I didn't itemize medical expenses, which I might do that because I have a lot of them. Um, but as of right now, because I have to file as being self-employed, I have to pay $657.98. That includes all of TurboTax fees and whatnot. Uh, so that's interesting. Not bad. I can just barely come up with that money after I get paid soon. <laughs> and then... Here's some interesting thoughts. One is that <clears throat> Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings and Star Wars, for that matter, are all driven by the bad guy. And you notice that like Voldemort and Sauron and Anakin Skywalker, who is my favorite, but Darth Vader, they're all... People really like them because they're super interesting because they're driving the action. Whereas the other people are being driven, you know, you especially see that in Harry Potter where he's being pushed, he's being pushed, he's got this reluctant hero, hero thing going on, and it's, it's not him driving action, Voldemort's the active, ambitious one with goals, it's driving things, it's really interesting, whereas a lot of the other stories that I like that almost can't, where the person captivates me more, I think Harry Potter is a great story, but Harry Potter the person it's not that interesting. I think Voldemort, the person, is more interesting. But it's something like Poldark. Poldark is interesting because he's driving the story for the most part. It's him having the ambition, the goals, and really driving the story, taking action and pushing it forward. Uh, and you'll notice the other thing about something like Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter, the story ends when Sauron ends. The story ends when Voldemort ends. It's almost like it's their story. <laughs> it's like Harry Potter is the story of Voldemort, basically, just told from someone else's perspective. It's super interesting. So I've been thinking about that. Uh, oh, man. My neck is really jagged up from looking out of that car. I don't even have it fixed. Still, like, the wire didn't work. I, I still have to do this whole chain thing. So... That's not going to be fine. We're good. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I was thinking about apathy, right? Because when my stuff really gets off, uh, my nervous system and then my hormonal system, because your hormonal system is run by your nervous system, then uh, I, I tend to get apathetic, which is not good, right? If you don't care about things, not good, not good at all. Y you know, one way to tell what your problems are, I guess, or I'm not sure. I haven't really formulated this. I was just thinking about it. I just have a couple of notes on it. Is that bother, if something bothers you, that's the subjective experience of an actual problem. Right? If it doesn't bother you, it's not actually a problem. And bother, so bother is the opposite of apathy. And yeah, I think that's I think that's an interesting idea or concept. My one student that I'm teaching that we're writing the Pokemon story with, we're trying to go through and work on the grammar of individual sentences, which I think would really improve his English the most, and we have made a lot of progress on that. 
but he's tired of doing that. So we're going back to reading other people's stories. Ah, look at my shoulders even cooking. So we're going back to uh, reading other stories. So hopefully in the future, I'm not sure when we'll come back to the Pokemon story with fresh eyes, maybe, because that would be really cool to finish up a, a story. I, I should have forced him to make it shorter. I he just wanted to go on so i let him and then i got too big if i would have forced him to make it shorter we could have had a short story completed and it would have been so much cooler so i messed up a little bit there i'm trying to restore some cervical lordosis after i got these most recent x-rays i posted my x-rays on facebook and i saved them in my google drive and i saved them on my computer and i saved them in my google photos but the issue, one of the main issues, is that impact still gets me. Well, and a lot of motion in any direction, crawling under a car, trying to reach for something, turning my head really messes up my neck. But also walking messes up my neck, and riding a car messes up my neck. And if I could get to the point where I can take more impact, that would be a huge improvement. I don't know if I can do that or not. But what I'm doing is trying cervical lordosis, the correct bend in your spine. And you can't really... See, I got a calendar over here, but I'm marking off days that I'm doing 20 minutes with a towel under my neck in a certain position for cervical lordosis. And I don't have any acute problems with it. Now, adjusting the position of ligaments to adjust the position of bones would take six months to see improvements. Bones and muscles heal in six weeks, right? So you can get changes in, in six weeks. You break a bone heals in about six weeks it's a lot different with tendons and ligaments connective tissues take that same time period in months right so that same number so six months to really see results it's a it's a lot longer process or probably even longer than that but i like the way it works out six weeks six months and so probably it might be more like six weeks and nine months but six weeks six months works good to remember and uh well We'll see. You know, I'm just a few days into it, but it hasn't caused problems, so I don't really have a reason to not do it, you know, other than the time and it's slightly uncomfortable and that type of thing. Uh, but it'll, it could turn out well. We'll we'll see. It would be really nice if that added some more resilience to my neck, essentially. Anyways, I believe that's all for now. Until next time, Jeff out.